All right, so open up your Bibles to Revelation 11. I was very surprised I didn't make much progress last week. So let's see how much we can cover uh, today. Revelation chapter 11. All right, we left off at verse 14. All right, I think I should start off with the chart. That way we can get familiar with what's going on here concerning seals, trumpets, and woes. So that's what we got so far, right? So then we have seven trumpets. We know that. We have seven seals. We know that. And then we also had three woes. So I don't know if you remember that. That's the reason why I have to do an overview, overview because some of you may have forgotten. All right. So let's start off with the seal. So then the first seal over here, that was the Antichrist. You want to write this down too? Uh, you can write it down too because this will be an overview if you want something more clear. The second seal is war, the red horse. Third seal was famine. Then we came across the fourth seal. That was death and hell. Came out in two parts, remember, which is why this part is going to be terrifying. And then we come across the fifth seal. The fifth seal was when the tribulation saints were being sacrificed, martyr. So it was a very very scary, a time of terror and wrath during that time. The sixth seal is catastrophe in the heavens. There's chaos in the heavens. And then the seventh seal, it was consisting of a lot of the trumpets. There was silence in heaven for half an hour, if you recall that. All right, let's go through the seven trumpets here. So let's go back to the book of Revelation. So we're reviewing Revelation chapter 8. Chapter 8. Chapter 8, verse 1, when he opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for half an hour. In this seventh seal, I explained to you that's, this seems to be more of a summary. So it may be that the seventh seal would be covering approximately up to this time. Remember, I mentioned that it's an overview. It's not in sequence. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and that the seventh seal are all these trumpets. That doesn't make sense. Okay, why? Remember why it doesn't make sense? Because Jesus is coming here at the sixth one. And because he's coming, remember one of the trumpets took like five months long. During this time, okay, so they're being martyred here. So this is your first half then. That's what's going on. So remember we covered that last time too. This is the abomination. So because there's the abomination going on right over here, they're getting martyred. The temple's being contaminated, remember? The Antichrist gets resurrected this time. They're getting martyred. Jesus is coming. The seventh seal, it's doing an overview. All right, the overview. Now let's do, now let's cover the seven trumpets here. The seven trumpets, it would consist of, we notice at verse seven, hail and fire mingled with blood. So let's cover trumpet number one. So number one, it would be hail and fire. All right, I know that's not a trumpet, but give it a break for now, okay? Yeah, okay. All right, trumpet number two. Trumpet number two would be the second angel. Sounded, great mountain burning with fire, was cast into the sea. Third part of the sea became blood. So it seems like a volcanic eruption going on. Yeah. Just trying to squeeze it all in. Okay. Amen. Amen. All right. The third angel, you'll notice that wor uh, wormwood is falling. 
So a meteor hit. So, all right, the fourth one right here, the fourth one right here. You'll notice at verse 12, third part of the sun smitten, third part of the moon, third part of the stars. So there is darkness. Four, five. Remember the fifth one at chapter 9? It was referring to those locusts. Now that's where your woe comes in. If you remember at verse 12, one woe is past, two more to come. So there's woe number one there. All right. You'll notice the sixth trumpet was mentioned at verse 13. In the sixth trumpet that's mentioned at verse 13, you'll notice that the Tartarus is loosed out. And then four fallen angels from Tartarus break loose and then unleash their demonic army. You'll notice the seventh trumpet is sounding out at verse 15, which we're about to enter. But verse 14 says, the second woe is past. Why? So sometime between the sixth and seventh trumpet, there is a woe number two. Woe number two you'll notice is that earthquake. Okay, so that's what it looks like so far. See that? That's the overview of Revelation of what's happening so far. Now, anyone who wants to say they want to go through the tribulation after that, you're high on crack. Let me just say that, okay? This is, look at this mess. Isn't this a mess? This is a mess. I mean, you, whether you get 10 years, 7 years, 3 and a half years, there's no doubt about it. There's too much in between going on that you're not going to catch a breath. <laughs> you're not going to catch a, catch a breath here. Okay, the seventh angel, verse 15. Here we go. The seventh angel sounding out. Oop, so it's got to be red. All righty then. Chapter 11. So we left off at chapter 11. Now we're at verse 15. Now remember we read verse 14. The second woe is past, right? The earthquake. Uh, behold, the third woe cometh quickly. The third woe is about to come, all right? But now the seventh trump trumpet is sounding, verse 15. The seventh angel sounded. See, the seventh angel is sounding that seventh trumpet. And there were great voices in heaven saying, once the seventh angel sounds the trumpet, there are voices up in heaven and they're crying out they're saying the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our lord so all the kingdoms of this world are now belonging to god and of his christ they belong to his son jesus and he shall reign forever and ever and jesus christ will reign forever and ever that's where you get the famous hallelujah chorus portions of it are from this verse Kingdoms of this Lord are, are of the Lord and of his Christ and of his Christ. And he shall reign forever and ever. Woo, man, that, that makes you all riled up, man. That makes you all riled up. Imagine that hallelujah. Man, can you imagine that revelation? Hallelujah, of course, is supposed to be in awe of his majesty. But in this terror that's going on, in this chaos and terror, all of a sudden you get the hallelujah chorus sounding out. Oh, man. And then can you imagine all these great voices singing hallelujah, hallelujah, while everyone's crying out, this is the end of the world. And then up in heaven, they're going hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs> the kingdoms of this world are of his Christ. Wow. America's going to be gone. China's going to be gone. Germany's going to be gone. England's going to be gone. What are we going to do? The kingdoms of this Glory. world are of his Christ. 
Jesus Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. And he shall, no! We need, we, united we stand. Yeah. United we stand. Divided we fall. No, nope, it falls. Yeah. It falls and belongs to his Christ. So notice it says, um, of his Christ, right? You notice that? Kingdoms of the Lord. Kingdoms of this world. So let's cover that one first. It doesn't say kingdom like some of your modern version. You'll notice it says kingdoms. Why? Because the devil wants to keep his united nations. He wants to keep all his kingdoms. What God, why did God say kingdoms? Because he knows that it's not going to be like a Roman empire, like a single Assyrian empire. No, he's talking about, he knows it's all going to be these kingdoms gathering together, nations yeah. gathering together. It's a united nations. So the United Nations, right, they all become what? They all belong to God, not to the Illuminati. Amen. They don't belong to Satan. They don't belong to the Freemasons. They all belong not to Lucifer. They belong, notice it says his Christ. Did you notice that? It says his Christ. Now, if I do this lower case, it's not... To disrespect God, it's just going by the King James Bible wording here, okay? So notice it says, his Christ. Do you know uh, Lucifer in Ezekiel chapter 28? He's called the anointed cherub. Anoint, you, did you know what Christ means? Christ means anointed. So Lucifer was an anointed being. You notice the, uh, who's in charge today of the United Nations? It's this Christ, right? Lucifer, he was known as the anointed cherub, Christ. That's why you get the anti-Christ, who's going to take care of that. But God says, no, the kingdoms of this world don't belong to this Christ. It belongs to his Christ. That's God's Christ, the right Christ over there. And he shall reign Forever and ever. You're out of there, man. You're out of there. Satan don't like that, man. Satan don't like that. They belong to Jesus Christ. All right. Uh, let's read verse 16. And the four and twenty elders. So notice, remember the 24 elders up in heaven? So that's us. Notice that we're up in heaven, the 24 elders. And what are we doing up in heaven? which sat before God on their seats, right? So we have our own seats, remember. Remember Revelation 2 and 3 and Revelation 5 and Revelation 1, that God gave a promise that the 24 elders or his church would have a seat to rule with him. So here we are, we have our own seats to rule with Jesus Christ. Fell upon their faces... Notice we bow down before God and worship God. Obviously, we worship God. So all that time we're worshiping God when they're singing, man, that's going to be something. You thought true worship was found in an everyday Sunday service when you sing a hymn during a blowout meeting or a summer camp revival? That ain't nothing. They're going to sing hallelujah while, every, while we're all going to be falling flat on our faces Amen. before the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Not only that, you think that we're being crazy in the room? You should see crazy going on down here. Yeah. Crazy going on down here? Well, everyone's worshiping God. Oh, how about that? Wild, man. Yeah. Wild. All right. What do we, how do we worship God? We say to him at verse 17, saying, we say what? We give thee thanks. We give God thanks. Hence, we get our idea of thanksgiving. See that? So, thanksgiving, that's the day that we can use to observe on how we thank our God. But giving thanks to God should not only be on a specific day once a year. It should be every day in your life. Amen? Amen. All right. So, there's nothing wrong to give God thanks. When we give him thanks, notice... 
O Lord God Almighty, we give God Almighty the thanks. He is Almighty. He is the Lord God. Which art, see, He is, and was, past tense, and art to come. He will be coming. So He's past, present, and future. That's our God. Because thou hast taken to thee thy great power. Look at that. He has taken to thee thy great power. He takes the power from Satan and gets it himself. He takes it. Now, if you recall, in Luke chapter 4, Satan said that these kingdoms I will give to you, Jesus. Why? Because it was delivered unto me. Because originally God gave it to Satan. But one day God's going to take it back like that. He originally gave it to him, the devil. But then one day God's going to get it back for himself. I can't wait for that day.